Howdy folks, Rock the Duck Farmer here, and I'm on the FTOG server playing Feed the Beast Stoneblock 3, and it's time to do Botania. And I figured I'd do this fairly fast without showing all the bits, just kind of how I get to a good working Botania setup. Now I've done a video about a one chunk uh, Botania setup that I really like. It's powerful, it does what I need, and let's just go ahead and make that up right here. So first thing I did is I made myself a 15 by 15 area. And if I hit the F3G, that brings up the chunks. And you can see that I've got the walls here on two sides. And then there's one block in on the other. That makes it technically a 15 by 15 square, which is fine. Let's turn that off. Uh, that's fine. It fits within a chunk. Uh, weird things can happen if, if you aren't within a chunk. So what I do then is I'll start and lay out where things are going to go that I will need. And I typically pick a area and say, this is my top of the chunk, wherever it is. And I'm going to do it this one here. Let's break this. And this is where my gateway is going to go. And we'll break this. There we go. So the gateway stuff is, uh, the elven gateway is going to go here. And so I'll put uh, some wood in, in place just to mark that out. And then the next thing I do is I do a three by three area in front. And this is where the Terra Steel stuff goes. So we'll go like this. That's going to be living rock. Uh, we'll need lapis here. And then the plate goes right on top of that. Then I, if you go from a corner out from here, that's this other area. So if we dig out a three by three here, let's go ahead and grab that. I'm just going to mark it with just random crud here. Oh, let's put a there. So it's a ring and we'll do the same thing over here. There we go. And again, we'll do a and I don't know why I drilled out the center when I don't need to. So these two pieces here and then one square off from the corner of that. Put a, a torch there for place marking in the center. And then over here is where we're going to have the enchanting stuff go on. And that's three. That goes this like this and then like that. And it should be 17 obsidian goes here. Ah, I misclicked. Ah, I misclicked twice. Okay, I will have to edit that out and post. You'll never notice that I, I did that. It's a good thing I've got a, a, a Paxel that's strong enough to, to take care of this. There's one. Fix that. And we'll fix this. Uh, I need to enchant my stuff. <laughs> I really do. But uh, until then, you know, we'll, we'll have to deal without. All right. And that goes there. And if I had thought about it, I would have gotten an extra lapis block, but I didn't. So this kind of lays out. You see how everything's here. There's some flowers that need to go around, and I'll fiddle with that when we get to that point. All right. So I don't need these guys here. They've done what they needed to lay out the area. Now, one of these is going to be a generating area, and one of these places is going to be the mana backup. And it doesn't matter which side. Uh, I think because I'm going to be running in and out from here, I think I would like this to be the mana backup side. So my processing of, of making mana over here, uh, the, the generating of mana, is farther away from the entrance, less likely for me to pick up stuff. All right, so that's, that's what I'm going to do. Let's move all this crap out of the way. So if we're going to start with Botania, one of the first things you'll want to do is gather up these flowers. Now, these are the double tall, or these are the tall <laughs> mystical flowers. There's one for each color. And there are also the small mystical flowers. And if you're not playing in a, a void world or a stone block world or, a, you know, some sky block like this, you just run around through the, the land looking for the flowers, pick them up, maybe go to a mining dimension, pick them up from there, whatever. Just gather them up until you've got all 16. And uh, and I just put them in this order because that's the, the way they show up over here. 
And that way I know which ones I'm missing. If you don't have access to these flowers in the landscape, you want to make some flora fertilizer. Uh, in the pack, it's pretty simple. It's bone meal and any four colors. And I don't think it cares that they're all the same. I'm not 100% sure. Don't quote me on it, but uh, I've got lots of lapis. Lapis is an easy one for me to start off with as a color, although I've got all the chickens now. Anyway, um, what you do is just hit this on the ground and it will start growing flowers all over the place. And one more. There we go. And so lots and lots and lots of these flowers. And then I'll break them all and gather them all up. I would vein mine these, but they will grab the, the two talls and I, I don't want to do that. I want just the smalls. Let's gather them all up. Uh, one of the things I really like jumping into Batania early for is to be able to have a magnet. I really like having a magnet. It's just one of those things that is the best to have. And looking around, it looks like I've gathered them all up. Cool. And we'll just offload them real quick. And if you're lucky, you've got all 16 colors. And what you'll want to do is it, you could sit there and take one of these. Let's take a black here. You can put it into your, your crafting table and break out two mystical petals from it. And with a mystical petal, you can then plant it onto the ground like that and hit it with fertilizer, bone meal, something like that. And in this pack, you can torque it. And now you've got a tall which, thanks to a change in Botania, you can actually harvest without a, a uh, sear, shears, and get four of the petals. And then you sit there and say, well, fine, let's plant all four of those. There. Now I've quadrupled my, my black dye, uh, or black petals. And you can just, you know, if you need some dye, boom, there you've got your, your dye. So very, very handy. It's another way of having all the, the, the dyes available to you with just a little tiny bit of, of handling it. All right, so with that done, the, the next thing you want to do is make a petal apothecary. And it's the recipe in the, the pack is just six cobblestone and a petal. And I'm not gonna make one because I actually got one as a bonus from uh, one of the, the packs, or one of the loot chests that I got. And did I grab, I did not, let me grab these two water eggs and toss them in and make a contiguous chunk of, of water here. And I'm going to put, it does. David in the, the, the server was saying that if you put it here in a two by two, it fills up. That is so super, super neat. And I think what I'll do, I'm going to change my mind here real quick. Let's grab some water there, grab some water there. I'm going to put uh, it underneath here because I've got a chest to kind of hold the other spot. There we go. So we'll put some water here, some water there, put the little apothecary there, and I'll fill this up. There we go. Doink, doink. Perfect. Uh, a little bit of light just to make that the grass grow faster. All right, this way I can access the water if necessary to fill up a water bucket. The petal apothecary is, is always filled, which is fantastic. And I've got my chest here for items and I don't have to fiddle with that anymore. Cool. Okay, so that's done. Uh, the next thing to do is to make a white petal uh, or white flower. And for that, you need four of these. And let's dump them into the apothecary and I need a seed which I don't have but I do have something growing here hey look there's a seed perfect and you just toss that and boom now you've got yourself a pure daisy and I typically only make one I don't see the the need to make more than that I'm going to for right now push that over here and I have a stack of oak and a stack of regular stone and I'm going to toss the regular stone here for right now and let this start shifting things over. You can see the little particles on here. It's going to take about 80 seconds to do that. So let's toss this out. So uh, the next thing I need to do is um, get 
a stack worth of the living rock and the living wood. And so that's what I'm going to wait. So that's a stack of stone, and I'll make a mana pool. And a stack of wood, and I'll make a spreader. And then I'll be using these things. Ah, uh, let's, let's do this real quick. We'll make three of these to make the twigs. I'll grab... Uh, let's grab one of you and one of you, because why not? It doesn't matter what, but we'll go boink, boink, boink. And put any two petals here, and that'll make the wand, which is very, very handy. Now, I want to generate mana. And for that, I'm going to go ahead and make some endo flames. And for that, it's two brown, one gray, one red, and a seed. And then if you right click with an empty hand, you can do it again. Yay! Which makes uh, doing this much faster since it's auto filling, which I really like. Uh, I've, I've had to deal with too many packs where you could never auto fill it with something like this. This is nice. All right, so there's eight endo flames. And that I'm going to put here. And actually, I can't plant them because I don't have dirt. I mean, I totally have dirt on me. Totally. Yes. Never had it without. Okay. I'm going to drop the mana pool first, right there in the center. And you, do you have to have the log there? No. I'm going to put the spreader right next to the mana pool. Uh, it works much faster the closer the burst is. And these, now because that's placed, I'm going to put these endo flames in place. And they will automatically bind to that mana spreader. You can see how this one's highlighted and there's the, the mana spreader as well. Boom, done. Simply, and now I can start generating mana, which is great. But what do I burn? Well, anything burnable. Uh, typically early game, I'll make a whole bunch of charcoal and I'll make charcoal blocks. Or I'll mine a whole bunch of, of coal and I'll make coal blocks and drop them on here. And that'll work. However, I've got uh, blaze chickens, and so I can do this. Uh, I only need eight. Uh, jump. And that's the highest burning item in the game. It, and so this will just go ahead and start making me mana. And I need oh, probably a quarter of a pool, maybe uh, um, much less than that. We'll see. While waiting for that to process, I'm going to go ahead and make four of these glimmering uh, living wood logs. Just a little bit of glowstone in there and stick them here. That's just a nice little touch of light, which I like. And you can see I've already spent some time chopping down the wood from here and turning it into living wood because this is a botania area. <laughs> I'm going to lean into that for the decorations. Uh, let's go ahead and grab these things here. Now, uh, eight blocks of blaze rods gave me, ah, uh, looks like an eight, let's see, see, that's four, yeah, that's an eighth of a mana pool, which is not bad. So I'm going to go ahead and convert uh, all of you and all of you and all of you, not that there's many of them, but I will convert those there. Uh, and let's make a few things. I want to make an altar. And for that, I need either a diamond or a pearl. And I'll go with the diamond because, you know, why not? I'm going to put that there temporarily for that. And then uh, I'm going to make this, this, this. Oh, I need the other bits here now. All right. I want two more of these plus the bit of glass. That makes a lens. And if I do the iron and the gold, that gives me the magnetic lens. Put that there, and that gives me the ring of magnetization. Yes, I love that thing. Okay, the other thing I want is take some of this and put in, I think it doesn't matter whether, again, it's a pearl or a diamond. I've got pearl and diamond eggs or chickens, doesn't matter. And this will make for me the band of mana, which is very nice. And for the next piece, I need to take you and redirect to the runic altar. And I'll put the mana pearl on there. And then five of these 
five. And that starts making the rune of mana. Let's take one of these living rocks. Drop that on there. And as soon as it's done, there we go. Now I've got this. And if we take this, go doot, 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 doot. And that there, now I've got the band of aura. And if I look at my ring slots, I think those are the ring slots, I'll put the ring of magnetization and the ring of aura in there. And that means my ring of mana will slowly start to generate mana. And it looks like I made four extra <laughs> mana stealing gets that I, than I needed. Well, that's okay. Uh, I'll, I'll live with that. Uh, let's redirect you back to the mana pool. And I decided that I wanted these guys to be on something than just plain grass, just to kind of make them stand out a little bit. So I made some coarse dirt. Yeah, that kind of will stay that color. And we can still plant the flowers on that, which works. And let's toss out another batch. Make me mana. Yay. Okay, so that'll go ahead and start making more mana. Uh, yeah, see, I used up three-fourths of that eighth of a pool. There, do the fractions. <laughs> That I'm not gonna do that, uh, and I think I'm gonna set it up. No, let's let's keep it so that uh, it will go in. Now uh, that will proceed. I just need this to make a little bit more mana, and then I'm gonna make a whole bunch of runes. Do you remember me saying that I wanted the generation over there and the storage here? Well, I remembered, and I switched them. So. Uh, at this point, I've run an entire stack's worth of uh, the, the blaze meshes on here, and that's given me almost a full mana pool, minus the few things that I've built up to this point. So that, that's a pretty good amount of uh, mana from that. So it is time to make a whole bunch of runes. So first thing I need to do is come over here and dump all these gunpowder in and all of these iron, because we'll need that for each of the various bits we're going to do. So. One of you, one of you, uh, oh, I need the carpet too. Let's get everything off of the bar so I can just do things better. Yes. All right. Totally flawlessly executed. No mistakes whatsoever. And I need the carpet right there. And then I hit it with all the living rock. And, oh, got a point. Stop that. Uh, got a point that to there. So the mana can come in. All right, there's air. Let's do that a second time. All right, air is done. So there's the air, earth, fire, water. And I like saying it in that order and the, the game does it differently, which is okay. That's fine. Uh, this we're going to do runes of mana. Okay. So that's empty. Uh, I want these that's empty. And this guy right here. All right. I am going to make two quick sparks and of of course I did it the wrong way around. There we go. Two sparks. And one of these sparks I'm going to put on the mana pool. Ta-da! Mana pool. Uh, the other, I need to grab these two bits here. And I need to prep my game a little bit better. Uh, the Terra Steel Agglomeration Plate. Let's make that bad boy. That goes right there. And I'll put another spark Doink, right on top of it, because that's the fastest way to transfer mana. I could take this mana spreader and put it there again, but mm, nope, not, not nearly as fast. Uh, now, I'm going to store these because I don't need these uh, at this moment. Air, earth, fire, water, mana. Uh, what I do want to do is make my first Terra Steel. So for that, I'll go drop and drop and drop and Give me one of you and give me one of you. I'm using those for other things. Uh, and so if I just right click on the plate, it drops them on it and that'll start the process. And that's going to consume about half of my mana pool. Yay, Terra Steel. All right, I'm going to 
take that and break that into nuggets. And if I grab six of these guys and go voot and voot and put three there like that, that will make the elven gateway core. And I'll put that right doink, there. Now, uh, I've gotten this from the birch to the actual uh, living room wood uh, with the glimmering bits in the core. That's the format it's supposed to be. It should ignore everything behind it. And uh, oh yeah, I was bored while I, that was processing and I was not feeling well and whatnot. So I living rocked everything and living wood. Did it. So a uh, little, little bit of thing there. This is, I want to make some pylons. So I'm going to go ahead and make eight of the pylons and then turn two of them into the nature pylons or natura pylons and i'm going to stick those here and then these guys let's come back to here grab these i looked at the flowers that i have the most of and the ones i think are the prettiest and i put them around so let's see it's one two three and three three yeah i think that's the way we'll find out uh there is a way of doing it within the uh the the botanic uh, lexicon the, the guidebook but i'm lazy and i've done this enough times that i might have actually remembered it and i did so there's the the structure for enchanting with mana not that i'm going to be doing that right now but I can't now that, that that's in place and my structure at this point is complete up top. Uh, this needs to be turned on and this needs to be set up with uh, mana pools. Hey, let's make some mana pools. So we're going to make five of the or five, 12 of these mana pools right here. Doink. And we're going to put one underneath there, one underneath there. These two, because they're underneath the, these pylons will be what charges this um gateway and you we're going to send you there and he's just going to sit there and spread the the mana from here into there i want i like having at least half a mana pool each they don't need i think they only need like a quarter of a pool each but i'm not exactly sure i'm guesstimating thinking not sure anyway uh, now that i've got these pools i can start uh digging this up let's get my pick back oh speaking of picks i decided to set up an enchanting area over here because i had time <laughs> i was waiting for this to process so uh, again i wasn't feeling so well so i said yeah I'll, I'll go ahead and do this let me grab three of those and let's enchant up my mana pick it's got unbreaking let's go with unbreaking see what i get i'm breaking an efficiency i can live with that um, I've got some netherite armor here, but I've got osmium armor on. And if we take a quick look at the netherite compared to the osmium, 331, and this is 431. Now, it doesn't have as much health. Let's move it up. So uh, this has a durability of 407, and that has a durability of 330. I can live with that, uh, especially since I want to put mending on all of my bits. Uh, what have we got here? Unbreaking. Let's. Oh, hey, Loopy, right there. Uh, let's go with unbreaking. But first, let's check this guy. Fire protection. I do like me some good fire protection. More unbreaking. Uh, anything here? Blast protection is really nice from those stupid creepers. You know, I think I like Blast Protection more than anything else at this point. And Depth Strider. Yay, all that water that I'm running through, <laughs> I can do it faster. All right, um, and that, that's enough for, for right now. Something to watch out for <laughs> here in this pack. Because you can crouch and twerk these, uh, these flowers into tall versions, uh, you will break this uh, enchantment setup. So there is a sneaky way of stopping that by putting string on top of these flowers. Yep, checking over there. And so now if I go twerkity, 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 they don't grow, which is good. Uh, these guys already have stuff above them, so that stops that. All right, so <laughs> that's something I had noticed. Uh, progress. I got enough mana in both of these pools. We got half a mana, so let's go doink. 
And yeah, so it looks like about an eighth of a pool ish or so uh, that, that got drained. But now they've got plenty of mana for as you toss things through. Uh, now, one of the things that I did, I did create this little uh, composite lens. Let me, can I just right click you? I can. Uh, this is um, potency and velocity stuck on here. And that's, that's fairly easy to make. Uh, potency is, is the fire with the lens. Uh, velocity is air. Uh, you stick them together with a ender, uh, not an ender pearl, but a slime ball. And now things will go faster with this. I am going to snag you because I'll need you elsewhere. Now, uh, I want to make a hovering hourglass. And over here, I'm going to make a floral obedience stick. Not necessary, but I'm going to make it anyway. I, I want to make a hopper hawk. And uh, the recipe is just some gray and some light gray air and the redstone root, which is grass and and uh, redstone. Uh, but I don't need to do that because I already have. I've got four of them from loot chests. So I'm not going to actually make that. And then the other thing I need to do is make a floating flower. So to do that, any flower plus two glowstone makes a glimmering. Put some dirt here, take this grass, toss that in, and that'll make a seed, the pasture seed. And that will give me a floating flower. And if I put the hopper hook on here, now it is a floating hopper hawk, which is super cool. And then I have over here a mushroom. Toss that in. That gives me an infestation spore. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is slightly different because I have hollowed things out below. I've got myself my little processing area down here. Here I've got the mana pool. And I'm going to take this. And nope, nope, can't do it yet. Can't do it yet. Nope. So I've got the mana pool. It's directly below the, the mana pool that's above. It's got its own spark. And I've got a redstone comparator popping out of it into a piston with a redstone uh, block. And then I've got this trail of redstone to a lever. So let's see what it says. Uh, power nine. So this is going to be about two thirds full. And when this is two thirds full, it will send out a signal which will push this through. And this dropper here will get powered. And so that will stop dropping new stuff. I'm going to go ahead and put, I'm going to put the hopper hawk right there. You know, I'm not. I'm going to put the hopper hawk behind it here. And it will pick up anything that matches what the sign is here. And if we hover over this with the, the wand, it says it picks up only items in frames. So these uh, blaze meshes will get picked up by this guy. And I'll put the hovering hourglass, make sure it's not going to get powered. It won't. I'm going to put that here and I'm going to give it 20 sand, which will uh, kick off every 20 seconds. And that will cause the dropper here to kick, which will pop out a, a blaze mesh. And if we click here real quick, I've got it filled with a bunch. In fact, I'm going to fill it up totally. And what's going to happen every 20 seconds, it's going to emit. There it goes. My magnet tries to pull it. But one of these hop, hopper hawks, not hopper hawks, one of these <laughs> endo flames here has picked it up before the hopper hawk. And so now that's starting to push mana into the pool. Let's take a look. Yep, it just, uh, it's, the green is slowly going up because it's just the one. And tick, there went the next. And now I've got two. And this will just continually run. Uh, and it's a fantastic way of just automating the, 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 the flowers getting fueled up. Now, I do have my magnet, but because of that trapdoor, it keeps me from picking it up unless I stand right here. Ooh, I'm not even picking it up unless I'm standing there. Even better. Uh, now, one problem is sometimes, let's go around this way, this guy might pick it up faster than the hopper hawks. So if you hit him with the infestation spore, that will slow down his pickup. And did I just grab that guy? Oh, I did. Oh, maybe I did pick him up. All right. Anyway, that works uh, very, very nicely. It's a slick little setup, but we need some sparks. And for that, I need a few more things. Let me go get them. All right, got three ender pearls. Let's drop them in, make a mana pearls. And this is why I needed the gateway. 
Now I've got three of these pixie dusts. And I think I've got some mana. I do. Like three of those. And three of these. And then for a dominant spark. And I need two of these. I need fire. And for the recessive, I need earth. So this tells me I need to uh, make some more fire. Because I'm out of those now. Uh, let's put you in there and you in there and you in there. So two dominant sparks and a recessive spark. And I've got a leftover spark because that's going to go onto the uh, enchanter. All right. So the dominant spark is going to go here. This uh, is dominant. And if I break this guy, that one right below there is also going to be dominant. There it goes. You can see the little... Looks like a little number five in red circling around. I'll grab you and put you... Do I have to shift? Yeah, I have to shift. It's pointing up, and I'll put the runic altar in here. Now I can craft stuff, and it's going to get charged. And this pool and that pool below the runic altar will get mana. Uh, let's come down here. I'm going to take this mana spreader, and I want to... Oh, nope, nope, can't do you yet. Yeah. I want to put recessive on this pool here. So any mana that comes in here, it wants to give off to any pools with any sparks. Well, except for isolation, but we won't talk about that one. Uh, this will give away its mana to any pool with a spark. And the ones with the dominant, they will grab mana from any pool with a spark. All right, so now I can put the mana spreader on here. Let's focus it down. Let me grab my lens just to speed things up. And this is why I'm gonna, I made that floral obedient stick. I can just go click and all of these guys now are pointing to that, uh, that spreader down below. And so I can get rid of this guy. You don't need him anymore. And yeah, you see the, those little things flowing around. Uh, that's mana going into those eight pools and then getting pulled into this one. And now I can sit here as long as this has fuel uh, out all those uh, generating flowers will push mana into here as fast as it can. Yep, pretty fast. And then this will get dispersed. And once this can't push out any more mana to any more pools because they're all full, this will start filling up. And when it's about two thirds full, it'll trigger the redstone and stop the dispensing of these blaze meshes which will still run for a little bit. And that's why I'm doing, you know, about two thirds full. If I did uh, completely full, then there would be some wasted mana over there. Eh, you know, who wants to waste mana? Nobody, nobody, nobody. So sadly, this Elven Gateway Core, the way Botania is written, that ticks a lot. More than most anything else that Botania has at this point. Well, the munch do where it's chewing the flowers last time i checked that one just ticks obscenely but other than that this one ticks a, a whole bunch and so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna take maybe two three stacks worth of stuff uh, so i've got two three stacks of elementium and the dragon stones and the pixie dust and i'm trying to think of the, the other stuff uh the dream wood and all those just get a bunch of them Toss through, and then I'll break and replace this core so it's not just constantly ticking. Because, you know, I, I want to play nice on the server. And there we go. A very working Batania area, self sufficient. Uh, is this everything with Batania? No, no. Uh, we haven't even done anything with killing the, the, the Gaia Guardian. And that needs a completely different area. It needs an arena, uh, at least a 25 by 25, you know, uh, circle. Uh, so big, not going to worry about that now because I don't want to deal with it. <laughs> anyway, this has been Grok the Duck Farmer here, making myself a quick little one chunk, self-sustained, nice little um, Botania area. And I like it. I like it a lot. Anyway, this has been Grok the Duck Farmer here, just repeating myself on the FTOG server, playing Stoneblock 3 by FT uh, Feed the Beast. And thanks for watching.